Thank you. This evening, our scripture is taken from Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7 and 8 to 20. And the first seven are explaining about why, we, why the birth of Jesus took place where it was. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was the governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. The shepherds and the angels. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them and about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Here ends the reading of his holy word. Throughout this season of Advent, we have had a series of sermons uh, discussing what the world tells us about hope, peace, joy, and love, and the difference between what the world uh, offers as definitions and expression of those ideas and how they differ from what God shows us to be, hope, peace, joy, and love. And so this evening, as we celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ, I want to take some time to discuss what the world was like when Jesus was born into it and how it is more similar to our world today than you might think it is. Now, Jesus wasn't just born into Bethlehem randomly, right? Uh, he was born in Bethlehem to fulfill a prophecy. In the book of Micah, we are told, and you, Bethlehem, you being the least, among the thousands of Judah, out of you, he shall come forth. But how does this happen? How is it that he is, uh, his parents are driven to Bethlehem? Well, they are heading to Bethlehem, uh, Mary and Joseph, because of a great census that was being taken by the Roman Empire. See, the Roman Empire were the ones that were in charge of Israel at this time. And so the people were to return to the place of their birth or where they needed to go to be counted by the Romans. Have you ever stopped to wonder why the Romans would do this? Well, first we should establish at the time that Jesus was born, the Israelites had been in the promised land for over a thousand years. However, except for a brief period of about 80 years, they had not been rulers of this land for over 750 years. 
So at the time when Jesus was born, the land was being ruled by that powerful Roman Empire. And the reason that they called the Israelites to return to the place of their birth for this census was to get a more accurate count of them so that they could enforce taxes upon them. So Jesus is born into a world where the people that are in power, that are, are doing whatever they can to make the lives of his people miserable. They are holding them down with military might, and they are taking all that they can from them monetarily in order to fund their empire and to help keep them as subjects in line. Now, does this sound like a great world to be born into? No, it seems like a dark time in the history of the people of Israel, and it was. See, the Israelites were struggling. They were struggling just to survive in a time when the forces that were in power were doing everything that they could to hold them down. Now, you know, if you attend regularly, I am not a pastor that preaches a political message. And that is not going to change this evening. But I think that we can look at the time Jesus was born and we can look at our world today and see similarities between the two. See, just as the Israelites were struggling in their time, we know that people in our time are struggling as well. We know that there are people in this world and people in our very own community that are struggling with the same problems of poverty and oppression that the people of Jesus' time were struggling with as well. So what else was the world like when Jesus was born? Well, it was a violent world that he was born into. There were wars being waged around the world. Indeed, there were insurrections being waged inside of Israel by Israelites trying to overthrow the Roman Empire. That is why so many of the Israelites believed that when the Messiah was born, he would be some sort of mighty military leader, someone that would come and lead the armies of Israel and throw out their oppressors. If we need more evidence of just how violent a world Jesus was born into, we need look no further than the actions of Herod, the king of the Israelites. See, when he heard that a Messiah had been born in Bethlehem, he had all the male children under age of two killed in that town, and it forced Jesus and Mary and Joseph to flee. Now, this also leads to the fulfillment of Scripture, but we can see how violent an act that was. But as we think about our world today, I believe that we can all agree that it can indeed be a violent world world. We need look no further than the news each night to see the violence that is being carried out against people all around us, whether it be the wars that are being raged in foreign countries or just the acts of violence in our own communities that are being carried out. So into this world of subjugation and violence, Jesus was born. And if you've been listening this evening and thought, wow, that sounds like a dark place for a child to be born into, you're absolutely right. It was a dark place for a child to be born into. It was a dark and dangerous world. And it is into this darkness that God chose to send the greatest light the world would ever know. So why? Why send Hit him into this dark world. Why not just start over again? Well, if people have gotten so bad and they've become so greedy and so violent, why not just destroy them all? Well, you know that God had promised not to do that again. But if we look through the history of the Bible, we will see that each and every time people have run this way away from him. It is God's love that has saved people. It has happened from the beginning when he chose to save Adam and Eve instead of destroying them. It happens with them at this time when he sends Jesus to save them 
instead of destroying them. And it happens for us today when we choose Jesus and he chooses not to simply destroy us. So God chose to send a bright light into the darkness so that we could have a way out of the darkness. You know, I think the quote from Martin Luther King Jr. describes this best because he said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. And hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. So that is why God chose to send Jesus at a time when the world seemed to be plunged into darkness. Because only light can drive out darkness. What does it mean for us today then? Well, I think we've established the world we live in can be very dark as well. We see violence and we see oppression and we see hatred in our world today. Does that mean that we simply give up? Does it mean that we join in the ways of the world and make it an even more dark place than it already is? Well, I hope and pray that the answer in your heart is no. No, we do not make this world darker. So then what is it that we can do to bring light back into this world? Well, there are two things I believe that can happen that can bring light back into this world. Now, the first is that Jesus comes back into this world. We know that he's promised us that he will return. And in that moment, darkness in this world will be no more. And you may think to yourself, all right, pastor, I got it. I'm going to sit back and wait for Jesus to come. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas, and I'll see you next week. Well, not so fast. I said there are two reasons, right? That is the first reason. The second thing that we can do is this. We can work to bring the light of Jesus to others in this world. You see, as his followers, I believe that is what we are called to do. We are called to let the light of Christ shine through us into this world. And we do this by living in the way that he has called us to live. And we do this by going to those that are living in darkness in this world and helping the light of Christ grow in their lives as well. See, I don't believe that we are just to sit back and wait. I believe that we are to be doing all that we can to bring his light to others. As I thought about it, I believed that this is truly a simple thing to do. See, it is a simple thing that we must do. And it is what we are told by Jesus to do when he gave us the greatest of the commandments. We are to love God with all our heart, all our mind, and all our soul. And we are to love our neighbors. That is how we take the light of Jesus Christ into a world that is full of darkness. That is how we drive out the scourge of hatred and oppression in this world. Not by joining with others in their hatred, not by joining in others in their oppression of others, but by showing others the love of Jesus. So let us rejoice this evening because unto us a Savior has been born, and let us do all that we can to take his light into a world that so desperately needs it. Amen.